<laughs> Praise the Lord. Medieval by Night I've looked forward to coming back to because one of the things we used to do was we had a motif and a kind of an intro that maybe we'll get a chance to bring back, but it was something about songs in the night or or video night and uh kind of had this music quality to it that was kind of do 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 like some old oh I don't know music from a piano and just had kind of like a starry starry night feeling you know kind of like an old lounge with the piano you know playing it just the stillness and the quiet of it just slowly led you into video night well who knows what the Lord may do one of the things that's been happening in this transi tr transition transition time is God has been taking us from one thing to another thing leaving behind that with which we had already done before which we've been doing for quite a few years Facebook we're transitioning over to Mississippi River well I'm, I am getting ready for you know going down the Mississippi River so since I'm kayaking it all the way down for four months we need to get ready for that and prepare but in the meantime we're still doing Bidibo, the ministry. And part of that ministry is to share that which we care about. Jesus. <laughs> and doing so, that means we care about you. So those who follow through to get to know the Lord will pursue after these things being found on Vidivo, whether it be on the YouTube website or the channels or the blog sites or the WordPress sites or wherever you may see them, you'll know that it's Jesus who's being talked about. It's Jesus we're learning about. It's Jesus who leads us, Jesus who directs us, and Jesus who guides us. Now tonight we're looking at the afterwards of the life of power. And that's from this book, My Utmost for His Highest, which I highly recommend for anybody. I mean, these cost like, well, I don't even know what they cost in real life. I know I paid maybe 10 cents for it, or maybe I got it free. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't see any price tags marked in here at one point in time. But basically, you should be able to find one freely, because they're on the Internet, too. But for today, it says, Whither I go, thou canst not follow. At least you can't do it now. But you will follow me afterwards, John thirteen thirty six. Now, in context, I want to be fair about this Bible study that Oswald Chambers is going to mention in uh, Most First Highest. What we're talking about in John, that you can't follow me, but afterwards you follow me, isn't really about living in this life, but about Jesus dying. Jesus is going to die and then ascend to the Father. We know that death cannot hold him because even as he went to the mountaintop to, as we say on our perspective, be transfigured, from his perspective, he was going up the mountain really to talk to Moses and Elijah. What they had to say, I would love to have heard. Whatever Peter heard, James and John with him, blew his mind, so he decided to build a tabernacle there, a tent or maybe an altar of rocks so that he could make a sacrifice to Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. Peter was always trying to do something traditional. Or in response to what God was doing, would try to do what he thought needed to be done. And that's kind of what happens to me a lot. There's things I would like to do. There are things that I want to do. Ah, Pepsi. Too bad I can't find the right size anymore. Excuse me. But wanting to do, thinking it should be done, but actually doing it is something I don't do unless it so be that the Lord tells me to do it. My early days, I used to spend a lot of time invested in helping others do what they said the Lord told them to do. Now, it's interesting that the Lord told them to do it and then they would go do something else and they never said after they went to do something else, the Lord told them to do it. They were just kind of like, maybe they made it up. 
So I am not quite sure where they were coming from, but I just watched and seed and learned and, you know, paid my dues, so to speak, and abided as God had told me to stick with them until it finally left them. Well, when the Lord had me go to Facebook, it was for a season, you know, and I'm not sure that I didn't stay longer than I should, but I ministered in direct commentary, commenting on certain posts, and some people met me that way. I posted devotionals regularly, and some people met me that way. I gave away a ministry to a young man, and he did it for about a year, and then before the year was up, kind of bailed on it. Now he's back ministering in his own right. Now, if I was carnal, I'd say, that was pretty of him, but... Am I carnal? I hope not. So I pray the Lord blesses him in his endeavors. I know that whatever people do to me, God rewards them. Now, it doesn't mean he rewards them with you know things they want to be rewarded with. He just gives them what they deserve because we reap what we sow. So I feel sorry for him because he kind of burned me. But that's the way it works in the internet ministry. Now, knowing things and abiding and allowing for the Spirit of God to lead, God said, go, and I left. So here we are, back with Vidivo. Now, Vidivo God gave to me for all my life. Vidivo will always be ministering and administering the grace with which we've been given because there are people out there where you are, around you, that need what you got. And there are people here where I am that don't want what I got. So here on the Internet, I get to allow those who choose to find them and be led by the Spirit of God to them to be encouraged where they are, as they are, the way they are. Hopefully, bringing them unto a closer relationship with Jesus. So, when Jesus told them, you can't follow me, he was speaking to his disciples, and they, in John chapter 13, 36, I'm not going to look it up, but I'm positive I'm right. You can go look it up and see if I'm right. But he was talking about leaving the disciples and going to his father. And he said, it's even better that I go because I'll send the Holy Spirit. It's beneficial that I ascend so that he may descend and you will be imbued with power. Now, Jesus was walking in the Spirit ever since he had been baptized at the River Jordan with John declaring, this is the Son of God who takes away the sins of the world. From that moment on, the Holy Spirit overflowed from him without measure. That's why he could do those things he did, and we are unable to do those things unless we yield ourselves to the Spirit leading. Not getting power, like the Pentecostals say, to do it on our own, to, hey, I got it, so I run with it. No, that's not the way it works with the Holy Spirit. God may let you have a long rope of grace, but you're probably going to hang yourself in the end because God will require of you, what did you do with the gifts I've given you? Some of those that are on Christian television or in ministries got a lot to answer for. Glad I don't. <laughs> freely I receive, so freely I give. That's all I can say about that subject. But an encouraging word is what I needed from the Lord because it was kind of a bummer leaving all this behind in some ways because every day I was doing 8 to 10 hours work, really, just in Internet ministry on one social media. Now we post to that social media, but not directly. It'll be a while before that link is restored. But we'll be posting still, but not all that we were doing before. So in Vidivo today, or Vidivo night by night, as this Vidivo is, if I remember right, funny how that works, your memory kind of goes, maybe, maybe not. I might be teasing. So, hey, that's kind of neat. Maybe I'll just do it down my nose. Does this look like a good, good look? <laughs> I need to get some more hats. All my hats are gone. But if you've seen any of the old videos, you know I had a lot of hats. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Three years before, Jesus had said, Follow me. And Peter had followed easily. The fascination of Jesus was upon him. He didn't need the Holy Spirit to help him to do it. Then he came to the place where he denied Jesus and his heart broke. Have you ever done that? You know, deny Jesus? No, I have. Heck, yeah. <laughs> Give me five minutes, you know, of conviction. I'll go, well, you know, okay, yeah, I'm a Christian, you know, you know, I kind of play one of those games. But, you know, eventually you realize it's better to admit it than to deny it. So sooner or later you come to that place where you just go, 
Of course I'm a Christian. I'm a Jesus gypsy. What do you expect? <laughs> Something else? I mean, you know, come on. I'm not a humanist. So really, it gets easier the older you get. Now, when you're younger, yeah, you know, you play Peter, and you will. If you haven't yet, then get in the ministry, and you will sooner or later. You'll find yourself being silent when someone says, are there any Christians here? There's no figure in front of, there's no figure stepping out in front now saying the Lord Jesus Christ. The first follow me had nothing mystical in it. It was an external following. Now it is the following of an internal martyrdom. He has to die to self in order to live unto Christ. From John 21, 18. Between these times, Peter had denied Jesus with oaths. He had denied Jesus with curses. He had said, God damn it, I don't know Jesus. Literally. He had come to the end of himself and all of his self-sufficiency. He had come to a place where there was not one strand of himself that would ever be able to be relied upon again. And in his destitution, he was in a fit condition to receive an impartation of the risen Lord. In other words, he was able to receive something that once he got every the hunk of junk that was inside out, there was room in the trunk for more to come in. And what came in was that he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. No matter what changes God had wrought in you, you can never rely upon them. But you can only build on the person of the Lord, Jesus. Jesus the Christ. And on the spirit of which he gives, not you get. You see, he has to be the one to give to you the Holy Spirit. You don't just get it because you go, ah, I'm going to take it, blah, 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 and start babbling, or rattling, or barking, or rolling around on the ground, or laughing uncontrollably. All our vows, you know, vows that we make to God, vows that we swear allegiance to the flag, vows that we make to the government, vows that we make in court, most of our lies anyways, but for some reason we make them still. But all of our vows and resolutions end in denial because we have no power to carry them out. We can't do what we say. We are, in fact, the most likely candidate, candidate to be the first in line for the hypocrisy that we are. We are, in fact, hypocrites to what we say we believe in. But when we have come to the end of ourselves, not in imagination, but really at the end, not just pretending like, oh, well, now I've had some hard times for a year or two. You know, now I'm, I'm ready to get God in my life and take over. No, when you come to the death martyrdom stage where I had been, you know, nearly dying early in my life, about 40 years ago, God takes over. <laughs> I needed him to. And when he says, then, at that moment, receive the Holy Spirit, because you're ready to receive the Holy Spirit. The idea is that of one that God invades you. You are the foreign object, the foreign territory that God decides to do a sneak attack and drops behind enemy lines inside your heart and starts working from the inside out so that you will eventually on the outside do your part, though you think you've been a Christian for who knows how many years. Until the Holy Spirit begins that work in you, you're really just a religious person, not a born-again Christian. There's only one lodestar in life now. There's only one focal point. There's only one person you are interested in, and that's pleasing Jesus. That's following Jesus. That's knowing Jesus so well that you can say, I hear his voice, and I will not follow the voice of another, because he I gotta get this pose down. Let's see it later. He is my Lord and my Savior. Because you see, it's easy enough to get Jesus or get God to save you. But it's a whole different matter when you decide to make Jesus Lord of your life.